basically what the title says, but I, 22-year-old female, and my girlfriend, 21-year-old female, have been together for 10 months and were friends before that for over a year. She has lots of friends, but one of them, who I'll call Ray, 20-year-old female, is kind of toxic. Ray and I have also been friends for the past year, as she is both a friend and classmate of my girlfriend. Ray has a toxic relationship with her boyfriend right now, and her previous boyfriend of three years cheated on her. So I don't like her advice on relationships, as I find her manipulative due to her relationships. Also, it's not the first time she reflected her relationship problems onto ours, such as making my girlfriend jealous of a boy her boyfriend is jealous of. The boy was just being kind by offering me a deal for going to the library in turns and having a seat for the other, which would let us have some rest during the other person's turn and secure a seat at the library to study. Note that the boy was a classmate of my girlfriend, and that's how we met, but we were the only nerds who go to the library in the mornings, so that's how the deal was made. At that time, I warned my girlfriend to trust me more and not argue with me over other people's problems. A few months after that, we argued about the boundary issues of my girlfriend. A mutual friend of ours talked about my past one-night stands at a gathering, making fun of some details I shared with them. I don't mind talking about it as they were funny. I was with my friends and I was single at that time, but this was different. I wasn't there. I was visiting my parents in my hometown. There were other people I didn't know and I didn't want them to know my one night stand stories. And also my girlfriend was there. We argued about it as she told me she was angry. I didn't tell her that our mutual friend was considering talking to my one night stand but I told her that it's none of my business. I don't care about him, the one night stand. And how could she let people talk like that about me when she was there? This argument is also important as I warned my girlfriend about boundaries and how I'm uncomfortable with her letting other people into our relationship. In July, I went to a concert with a few friends and their friends. There was a boy I'll call Emil. I thought Emil was hitting on me at the beginning but I talked about my girlfriend during a conversation and let him know I have a partner, so I thought that would be enough. After that, I considered his behaviors as overly friendly as he was a social butterfly. I even texted my girlfriend with a picture of us saying, look at my new bro. Well, he was still hitting on me. At the end of the night, he requested my phone and followed himself on my account, and I felt really bad as I felt I was leading him on. My friends assured me that I wasn't as I couldn't stop talking about my girlfriend. I decided to talk to my girlfriend when I went home, but she was sleeping, so I told her in the morning. We argued. She was angry at him and kind of at me, as I'm generally misunderstood as flirting and know that, but didn't act accordingly. I apologized, and we made up. The next day, she was meeting with Ray, and suddenly she was cold. I was like, did I do something again? No. She told Ray what happened, and Ray was angry at me for not having boundaries. We made up again, but I warned her that I don't want our problems to resurface after being solved. A few weeks after that, we were going to celebrate our mutual friend's birthday, and Emil was going to be there too. My girlfriend was nervous the entire time, to the point I offered that we not go. She was also coming. She promised she wouldn't argue, as I hate arguments at happy events, especially if they are for other people. I promised and tried to engage with Emil as little as possible. I never spoke to him one-on-one, -on -one, apart from when he was my teammate during beer pong, which was due to my teammate leaving for a phone call. I did my best to avoid a fight, but I couldn't. Long story short, Emil was rude and inappropriate to my girlfriend, called her insecure, asked if her parents were divorced, and that's why she has trust issues told a mutual friend to invite only me to his house after the party. And they argued. I shook my head at Emil and asked my girlfriend to stop, which she didn't reply to. Then I asked both of them to stop arguing as it was the birthday of our mutual friend and they were ruining it, to which both of them replied with, we are not arguing. And I just said, okay, and left the table to pay for my part of the bill. After that, we had a big argument and my girlfriend said how I could leave her while I said how she could argue after promising me not to. I told her that I thought Emil was wrong, 
but she was also wrong for me as she didn't keep her promise. We couldn't fully make up that night. The next day she went out with her friends and we had our biggest fight. She came home, cold as ice, not texting me, not talking properly. She said some unacceptable things and I told her if she said another word like that again, I would not tolerate it. My friends said that maybe you liked him. Why did you shake your head? Do you have a secret to keep with him? Who knows what would happen if I wasn't there? Mind you, I've never cheated in any of my relationships or even in situationships while she has. I asked her who told her that, but she refused to answer and told me she didn't want to tell, only stating, one of them is from my hometown and we see each other type of things, which I misunderstood due to our language. I thought both of them were from her hometown. We hardly made up after those words as I hate cheating and I couldn't accept being accused of it when I didn't do anything to lead Emil on. Last week, we went camping with my friends for my girlfriend's birthday. I wasn't available at all as my younger cousins, 17 years old, were visiting me, but I went there for my girlfriend. I was always on the phone with them as they were from my hometown and had never been to my house before. We were always texting, and they called me every three to four hours to ask questions. That was when Ray incited my girlfriend about why I was always on my phone on her birthday, which my girlfriend finally defended me. I left early the next morning, but they stayed until night, and my girlfriend had a big fight with Ray about Ray's behavior in their friendship. When she came home, she was so angry that she accidentally said Ray was the one who told her that I may be cheating. My behaviors were similar to her ex while he was cheating, and why am I still following Emil? I didn't even know I was still following as I'm not an active user on Instagram. Everyone knows as I reply to messages days later. At that point, I was done with this Emil situation that has been going on for a month, and I yelled at her. I told her, I will do what you want me to do for you to close this matter. What do you want? I explained my side. I apologized. I don't talk to him. I will never see him. I don't know what else to do. What will make you believe that I am not cheating? I don't care about your family or your reasoning about being skeptical. If you are so skeptical, then have friends who don't feed your delusions and wouldn't let you argue with your girlfriend over nothing. I know I was rude, but that was our topic for a month, even after we resolved it. She was being sarcastic about it. I also told her that I'm done with her letting third parties into our relationship. She either fixes herself or I'm out. I'm not the one who told her lies. I'm not the one that cheated on Ray, and I won't be the one paying for other people's mistakes. I was also angry at her for allowing me to hang out with Ray after she spoke poorly about me and only told me when they argued. I told her that from now on, I'm never hanging out with Ray, apart from events such as the birthday of a mutual friend. She can hang out all she wants, but meeting with Ray only for a coffee catch-up is no longer acceptable for me. In the beginning, she accepted all of this, saying sorry, probably because she thought I was going to break up, but now she is guilt-tripping me about how Ray didn't mean it, how she deserves a chance to explain herself, how she has trauma and couldn't think straight for a moment. I told her to leave me alone and maybe later, but definitely not now, but she didn't. She now talks about how Ray asked about me, if I'm okay, do I need anything? What do I do? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, nobody likes feeling that way. That's why the rest of the world cuts off the type of people that you find. If they aren't stomping all over your boundaries themselves, they're just letting their friends do it. In my opinion, people that need to be pushed very hard to be a reasonable and non-hypocritical person aren't really worth keeping around. But hey, if totally normal relationship things are worth suffering through her unreasonable behavior, then go ahead, enjoy your misery. Comment two, it's slightly disappointing you wrote so much and never came to the conclusion that all of this is optional. It must be exhausting. Why would you be with someone that invites so much drama into your life? Just move on, your stress levels will decrease. I've never had as much drama in my entire life as you have in just one or two months. Now. For the update, two days have passed since the camping trip explosion. It felt like the calm before the storm, and I was right. 
got a text from my GF asking to meet up at our favorite diner. That place has seen a lot of good and bad times. She arrived looking upset. Cue me bracing for another huge fight. We ordered burgers and fries, and honestly, the tension was super thick. She started talking, wanting to clarify how she felt about Ray's influence on our relationship. At this point, I was just a little over listening to the same concerns being repeated. I get it, Ray is a problem, but what was she doing about it other than talking? She then mentioned she had spoken to Ray about our issues. This is where I got really mad. Like, seriously? You went to the source of the problem to discuss our problems? I called her out on that, saying that Ray's advice was still harmful to us. She kept insisting that he had apologized for his past behavior, but I wasn't buying it. It just gave me more stuff to throw at her, and we ended up arguing over the role Ray played in our fights. She suggested that we could all hang out together to resolve things, and I flatly refused. Like, remember the last incident with Emil? Yeah, not happening again. She called me closed-minded and inflexible. I call it self-preservation. That night, I got a call from a mutual friend, Sam. She told me that Ray was spreading rumors about me cheating. I was so done at that point. I texted Ray to meet me at the local arcade. We used to hang out there, so I knew it would get a rise out of him. He arrived with this cocky attitude, like he was untouchable. I confronted him about the lies he was spreading, and he just laughed it off, saying he was just keeping things interesting. I lost my temper and called him out on his history of manipulation. He gets all defensive, trying to turn the blame back on me. So, I pulled out my phone and started recording. His reaction was priceless. His demeanor changed so fast when he realized he was being filmed. I asked him if he wanted to retract his statements on the record. He mumbled something about everyone needing to relax and dismissed me like I was nothing. I saved the recording, knowing it could be useful later. The next day, I sent the recording to my girlfriend. She was furious and demanded we confront Ray together. We met at his apartment, and my girlfriend laid down the law. Ray tried to downplay his actions, but the recording spoke for itself. For the first time, my girlfriend stood firm and cut ties with him on the spot. He stormed out, leaving us alone. She promised to focus on our relationship, leaving him behind. I wanted to believe her, but I could tell she was still conflicted. She found out later that Ray had been telling others that she was the real problem in our relationship. I decided enough was enough. I was going to expose Ray's behavior to our entire friend group. I organized a small gathering at my place and shared the recording with everyone. The atmosphere shifted as friends started to recognize Ray's toxicity. Things are still complicated though. I know my girlfriend is trying to change and move on from Ray, but I can't shake off this feeling that it's gonna take a lot more time for her to fully let go. And honestly, a part of me is worried about how our friends are gonna treat her after this. I get that Ray's the real problem here, but the damage is done and trust is broken on both sides. I'll make sure to post an update if anything big happens. Mini update. After sharing the recording with our friend group, I noticed a mix of reactions. Some friends were supportive of my girlfriend and me, while others were hesitant to take sides. A few even confronted my girlfriend about her involvement with Ray, asking why she stayed friends with him for so long. It was tough seeing her get questioned like that, especially after all the stress we've been through. It's clear that Ray's actions have put a strain on our entire friend circle. Am I the idiot for exposing my father's affair and blowing up my family? A few years ago, my dad, who is 49 years old, cheated on my mom, who is 46 years old, and my siblings and I found out two years later. My mom explained that in this culture, we don't divorce. Also, it wouldn't be great either, moving out to smaller apartments, not seeing each other daily and during holidays. My dad could literally leave all day and night to go to multiple women instead of coming back to us. She also said your father might not be a good husband, but he is a good father to you all. So, I have forgiven him and moved past it. No one knows. In return, she's allowed to see his phone all the time. His mother, my grandmother, caught wind of it at one point, but he denied it. She is kind of naive, so she really believes her son. Five days ago, I was on his phone to find a song. I saw a message from someone that said good night. 
I didn't know who it was, but I was suspicious. I wanted to check his phone an hour later. Guess what? He deleted the chat and even deleted the contact. The person had no profile picture, but was saved as table. I had airdropped a screenshot to myself to make sure I didn't imagine it. Two days later, I saw he had Telegram downloaded, which I know he uses for work. All messages were normal, right? Then someone sent a chat to him. It was a red heart. I looked at the profile. I remember this lady because she works at his company. I even met her one and a half year old son. I kind of started to spiral since her husband is white and she is half Kazakh and Romanian. The kid does not look white at all. But I decided that night to not think of weird biological dad things and just focus on the main problem, his cheating. I took matters into my own hands. Since my dad keeps deleting his chats, I had to download the data. I downloaded Telegram, logged into his account, and took a photo every time they chatted before he deleted it and saved it myself. Not sure if I have enough evidence yet. I do have one screenshot where he replies back to her with a kissy face. Today, I got a call on my phone from someone called Table. When I tell you my heart hasn't beaten that fast in my life before, the mistress called my father on Telegram, and since I was logged in, I received the notification too. Now I know that Table from WhatsApp and the lady on Telegram were the same person, and I have proof. Their call lasted one minute. I called my dad right after to ask what he was doing. He said nothing. I'm going to pick your mother up in a few minutes. Tonight my dad is going somewhere for two hours. Work, he said, but I don't believe it. I want to tell my mom. I looked online for advice. Users kept saying that I shouldn't do it because a relationship is something between them and I shouldn't meddle. Some people said approach your dad. Maybe he will be scared and stop it. Some people said never tell anyone. Guys, I don't know what to do and I really want to tell her at one point. I do have the fear that if my mom decides to divorce after all, which I stand behind, he is free to do any disgusting thing he wants to, which in my opinion is not something he deserves. Freedom? No. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to see that mistress two weeks from now. I kind of want to confront her in real life, but I won't. Mind you, I'm 19 years old and I have 12 and 15 year old younger siblings. One of them has anxiety and ADHD issues, so I feel like this could impact him the most in regard to school and mental health. Please help me out. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, your mom knows he cheats. She knows he is not a good husband and she will never leave him. I don't see the point in telling her. Comment two, you are 19, leave it alone and go live your life. Your mom is not going to leave him. You are wasting your time and energy on this. Now for the update, I'm almost out of time so I might as well just tell you everything that happened. So the day after I confronted my dad about the whole thing, I figured I should just keep a closer eye on his phone. I was scrolling through his texts, like I didn't have anything better to do. Anyway, I noticed that there were more deleted messages. I was like, this guy really thinks I'm not onto him. I found this message from someone saved as table. Apparently, he was talking about this hotel in the city. I recognized the name because it was the same place where he'd taken the family for a weekend trip like two years ago. I still remember it. My mom was all excited because she thought it was a surprise for their anniversary, but it was just a coincidence. Anyway, I texted my dad pretending to ask about plans for the weekend, trying to see what he was going to say. He replied, saying he was staying home to catch up on work. Super suspicious, right? During a family dinner, I kind of overheard my dad on the phone in the other room. I heard him mention the name of the woman from work while he was talking. Of course, I had to wait until he left the room so I could sneak a look at his emails. Found the hotel reservation in there, showing he booked it for two nights. So, I confronted him again that evening, showing him the reservation. He denied everything, claiming it was for a business trip. Yeah, right. I discreetly asked my siblings if they'd noticed anything strange about my dad lately. My younger sister, Kate, mentioned seeing him leave late at night a few times. So we decided to reach out to the woman at work using an anonymous account. The woman responded, saying she was confused about my dad's messages. Turns out he had been sending her unwanted advances. I shared that info with my mom during a family gathering. She was shocked 
but didn't want to believe it was true. I then sent screenshots of the evidence to my mom's phone during dinner. The atmosphere became super awkward and everyone just went silent as my mom read the messages. My dad returned to the table, sensing something was off, but I don't think he knew what was going on. My mom confronted him, but he kept denying everything. The argument got really heated with my mom visibly upset. In the chaos, my older brother, Jake, tried to mediate but grew frustrated. The family dinner turned into a shouting match with accusations flying all over the place. My dad stormed out of the house, claiming he was being unfairly accused. A few days later, my mom decided to confront the woman directly. I learned from her that my dad had been lying about his whereabouts for months. A family meeting was called, with everyone present except my dad. During the meeting, my mom revealed she was considering separation. The family dynamic shifted with everyone unsure of what to expect next. My dad returned home late one night and the confrontation resumed. My mom finally told my dad that she was done with the lies. The next morning, my dad was gone, leaving only a note behind. The note expressed his anger and refusal to accept any blame. Still processing. I honestly didn't think it'd get this messy, but here we are. I'm still trying to wrap my head around all of it. Like, it started as me just trying to protect my mom, and now it's turned into this huge family crisis. I mean, I knew something was up, but I didn't think it'd go this deep. My siblings and I are all over the place with our emotions, ranging from anger to disappointment, and to be honest, we don't even know if we can trust our dad anymore. And my mom, she's been putting on a brave face, but I can tell she's hurting inside. It's just so messed up. I never thought our family would be in a situation like this. I'm still trying to figure out what to do next. Like, do we try to reconcile with him or just cut him off completely? There's just so much to process, and I guess I'll just have to figure it out as we go along. Edit. It's been a few weeks since the family meeting, and things have been challenging. My dad hasn't contacted any of us, which is honestly a relief. My mom has been trying her best to keep things normal, but the atmosphere at home feels different. My siblings and I have been spending more time together, which has helped us cope. We've discussed whether we should reach out to our dad, but we're all on the same page about needing time. As for our extended family, they've been supportive, but we haven't shared all the details. We're still figuring everything out, one day at a time. Am I the idiot for taking a break from my boyfriend after finding out he slept with someone else and lied about it. I, 24-year-old female, have been dating my boyfriend, 25-year-old male, since last November. It got serious within a couple of months as we've known each other for so long. We've been friends for about seven years. I had a huge crush on him as a teen, and every now and then it would spark back up over the years. I underwent chemotherapy last fall and saw him when I went home about two to three weeks after completing treatment. He confessed his feelings to me, told me he thought I still looked beautiful. I was like no eyebrows, no eyelashes type of bald, laugh out loud, and made it clear how serious his feelings really were. It was so romantic. Fast forward to this summer, he ends up revealing he slept with a friend of his last summer. Without protection, and who he hasn't seen since, busy with school, became awkward, etc. This was after me questioning him about various friends because I felt like he was hiding something. We talked it through and it wasn't the end of the world, though he had slipped other lies in here and there that I had to call him on before reaching the full truth, and that bothered me a lot, and I gave it to him pretty hard. Not mean, though. Then a few weeks later, about a month ago, I told him again, is there anything else you have to tell me? He tells me that after he slept with his friend last summer, she reached out to him and let him know that she contracted human papillomavirus, but thought she got it from the guy she slept with right after him because she confronted him and he seemed guilty like he knew what she was talking about. I have a feeling this is what happened and saw the texts of her explaining it to my boyfriend from last summer. I still feel very hurt and betrayed. I was just barely out of a, frankly, traumatic health crisis, and he didn't say anything and put my health at risk. It's the principle of it that bothers me most. I've had a bunch of talks with him about it. First mad and firm, I wasn't vindictive, but gave it to him real, 
and he seemed very sincere and very emotional on multiple occasions. The last time we saw each other, everything was normal and fun. But, I don't know. Is it literally super stupid to keep going with this guy? Is he just a straight up liar? I've been sweet on him for so long and everything seemed so good before that. We have always had a special dynamic and I've honestly loved him for a long time. He's supportive, patient, funny, giving, and I think he is a good person. Frankly, I am struggling with my health recovery and have never had a serious relationship like this. Plus, I just feel really shocked and disoriented after this summer. If I get a positive test, I'm out. But for now, I'm putting off getting the test because I have a lot of other health anxieties right now. I'm going through stress and depression, so I don't know how to think about this fully and access my feelings. I feel like I'm trying to ignore it in a way. I feel like I can't handle tough thoughts right now, let alone a breakup. Very indecisive. Any advice? Is he a massive red flag? Any advice on how to overcome this if I choose that route? I guess I just need an outside perspective from someone with more experience. Thank you. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Freedom means no consequences. If you keep forgiving him, he'll keep at it. With all the health issues, you've got to think about what is right for you. Breakups can be stressful. So can be eternal vigilance over someone who's unfaithful. And also, one lie is all it takes to not trust a guy ever again. I'm sorry for your loss. Comment 2. You are letting the fact that you've had a huge crush on him cloud your judgment. You have fallen in love with who he has the potential to be. The real him lied, then lied some more. He's put your health at risk. You are physically and emotionally vulnerable. I would consider any one of his actions a red flag. Now, for the update. Three days after I posted my last update, I decided I needed to take a break from everything. I was so overwhelmed and just wanted to focus on my health and recovery. So I called my doctor and scheduled a follow-up appointment to discuss HPV testing. I wanted to get more info and really understand what was going on. I figured I couldn't put it off anymore. During the appointment, my doctor explained the importance of regular screenings and how to manage my health moving forward. It was really informative and honestly, it helped me feel a little more in control of my situation. Knowledge is power, right? My boyfriend and I agreed to meet at a local diner where we had shared so many meals during our relationship. We had a lot of good memories there, but I had a feeling this was going to be different. The whole atmosphere felt tense as we both sat down, avoiding eye contact for a moment. I don't know how we got to this point. He started off by apologizing again, saying he was really sorry for what he had done. I listened to him, but I felt this urgency to address my concerns directly. I couldn't just sit there and let him control the conversation. I brought up the need for transparency and honesty moving forward. I needed to know everything, no more half-truths or omissions. He seemed hesitant at first, but he eventually opened up about more details regarding the friend. He said it was a one-time mistake. I don't know if I believe that, but I didn't push it further. At that moment, I just wanted to get through this conversation without any drama. The waitress brought our food and we fell into an awkward silence. To lighten the mood a little, I decided to change the subject to a recent movie we both enjoyed. I even tried to throw in some inside jokes we had about the film. At first, he laughed and shared his favorite part, but honestly, the laughter felt forced and the underlying tension just remained. No amount of joking could break that. After we finished our meals, I suggested we take a walk to clear the air and talk more openly. We needed to be in a different environment. It was a nice day outside and I thought it would be good for us. But right then, he got a phone call and stepped aside to take it. I stood there alone, watching him, feeling like I was holding on to a sinking ship. When he came back, he looked flustered and mentioned it was about work. I didn't believe him. I felt something was off but I didn't say anything. I just nodded and tried to act normal. We decided to head back to my place to continue our conversation in a more private setting. Once we were at my apartment, he seemed so distracted, glancing at his phone a lot. It really irritated me. I confronted him about the call from earlier, asking if it was related to the friend from before. He denied it, of course. 
but deep down, I could feel this distrust growing within me. It made me question his honesty all over again. To ease the tension a little, I suggested we watch a light-hearted show. I thought it might help us forget about everything, even if just for a little while. As we sat on the couch, the atmosphere shifted again when a text came through on his phone. I didn't even want to know what it was, but I felt like I couldn't look away. He left the room to get some popcorn, and I saw the message pop up. It was from the same friend. Instead of confronting him right then and there, I decided to take a moment to gather my thoughts. I needed to figure out what I wanted to say and how I wanted to approach this. When he came back, I acted as if everything was fine. I didn't want to ruin our evening by calling him out while we were trying to relax. The next day, I got a message from my mom inviting me to a family barbecue that weekend. At that point, I needed a break from everything, so I accepted. At the barbecue, the atmosphere was so lively with laughter and games. It really lifted my spirits for a bit. My family knows how to have a good time. During the event, my younger sister asked about my boyfriend, and I just deflected with some humor. I didn't want to get into it with her. Later, while we were cleaning up, my brother casually mentioned he had heard some rumors about my boyfriend. I felt a pit in my stomach. What now? He claimed it was a misunderstanding, saying my boyfriend had been with a group of friends and left early. I don't know what to think. I really don't wit. My siblings and I agreed to take a break from seeing each other until I felt ready to talk again. I just needed some time to process everything. I didn't want to be around them and feel like I had to give them answers I didn't have. To answer a few questions, I did not get tested for HPV yet because I wanted to focus on my mental health first. My boyfriend does not know about the rumor my brother mentioned, and I haven't confronted him yet. I want to gather my thoughts before addressing anything else with him. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.